All right, we're gonna start off with some, some legs. I'll show you a little bit of the squat again, you know, we could do some free weights. Um, you know, I do a little bit of both. Actually, I should start with free weight first, okay? Only because of the form on the free weight. And uh, again, uh, the form is everything. Form is everything, I've always emphasized that. I always make a point of it because it's very crucial. Again, you don't position your feet right, you, your back, you could get injured, or you could be performing the exercise without benefiting anything whatsoever. So let's go here with the, in the free weight bar. I will show you there, and then I will show you in the Smith. Two different machines. You know, of course, this is free weight. This is a machine. The difference is, on this one, you have to have a lot more concentration. Why? Because now you have the bar behind you. At the same time, you have to keep the balance. And after the balance, you have to perform the exercise. So those are key things you have to remember. Unlike the Smith, basically, it's just stabilizing yourself on the bar and just worrying about the movement because the balance is already kept by the machine, all right? So let's start over here with the freeway bar. Some people like this, you know, they're a little sensitive, they don't want the little, I don't need that, you know. <laughs> you know. Where you place the bar. Where you put the bar behind here, again, it's always gonna be on your traps, right here. Not here. You don't want the spine, the neck, you don't want anything around this. It's very sensitive, you know. Spine, you know, you can get paralyzed and all that means other not so fun stuff. But let's, let's focus on where to put the bar, okay? First, you're gonna notice where I put it. Right on the trap. Okay, this is where it is. All right. Now, to perform the exercise, I'm gonna show you. With this, again, it's like always, guess what? Chest up. Chest up is always important. And your feet positioning varies with each person's height. A shorter person might not go that wide. They might go a little less wide, you know? As you keep getting taller, a little wider. And if you're six feet and above, guess what? You have to go a little wider. Why? So let's just say I go too narrow. If I go too narrow for my height, this is too narrow. What's gonna happen? My back is arched, everything's perfect. My feet positioning or not, guess what? This is what's gonna happen. See, it becomes a back exercise. I'm not doing lower back. I'm doing squats, I'm doing legs. Right here. This is where it's at. Chin up, because if you keep your chin down, what, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna, you're gonna go down. You don't want that, okay? Chin up, chest up, knees slightly bent, and you're ready to go. How low can you go? Low enough where your buttocks and your legs are parallel to the floor. That's it. Let me give you a side profile so you can kind of see it. A little quick side profile. See how low I go? Again, right there. See where you are? Getting the legs? Right there. See, not leaning forward, not too far back, arched, chin up. Chin up. Chin up. It's great. That's the squat. See, that's the squat right there. He knows what he's doing. Now, I'm gonna show you on the Smith. On the Smith, again, slightly different. One of the things is, you don't have to keep balance. You place your feet a little bit closer, and it will help your sweep, where the squat, of course, is gonna help your sweep, 
and your teardrop. But right here, is always one step under your eyes. That's it. One step. One step. And that's it. When you go down, basically, it's your back arches. Well, low enough. Remember that one step move, and you're always going to have the correct form. On the squat, never ever lock your knees. You don't want to lock your knees. Always a little bent, never to the bottom. Okay, you don't want to go way down here. That opens up your knees, is no good. Okay? Okay? That was for the squat. Again, loading weight and everything else. It's very important, of course, that if you want to increase the muscle mass, you want to get it thicker, great. It works your quads, it works your glutes. I mean, there's not much great, there's not any more I can say that's great about this exercise. It's just one of the best when it comes to doing legs. I want to show you something quick on the leg extension. Not the leg extension itself, only because it's easy, anybody can do it. I want to show you a secret for the quads on the leg extension. All right, here we are, the leg extension. Again, leg extension is great exercise. You know, most people know how to do it, but we not, I'm not here to show you that. I'm here to show you what you can do to help your upper quads. What can help your upper quads? I'm gonna tell you right now, for this part right here, for the sweep, this is a pretty simple movement, yet most people still don't know how to do it. On this one, it's basically putting the bar right on your knee. Why is this great? Because this actually helps your upper quads and your abdominal area, okay? So, Simple movement, do it. Works right here, this area. And it's for the quads. Very short movement, but effective movement. And usually, some people have a problem acquiring this upper area. It's a very detailed area. It comes into play when many guys compete or anybody have uh, weak hips, if you have weak hips, this is a very good exercise, again. And it helps, again, it helps with the, uh, with the abs as well. It's right here. It's muscle right here. Yeah, I learned this from Mr. Munoz. It's a great exercise, again, and it helps. You can do this in between your basic leg extensions. Mind you, when you're doing leg extensions, on this one, most people kind of go too far down. You always want to keep that pressure. Keep that pressure locking right up top, you know? You want over here, teardrop, right there. More teardrop, more teardrop. You wanna work on the outer sweep, feet straight. So your feet posi positioning is very important as well. Feet straight, work both, inner and outer now. So as for the quads, you know, now we're gonna move on to some hamstring movements. Hamstrings are great. 
It completes the, the, the entire leg area. It's awesome. I love them. But most people still hate them because they can't see them. You get an annoying pump. It's very annoying. Uh, even to this day, I find it annoying, but uh, it's a lot of fun exercises to do for, uh, for hamstrings. I'll show you my favorite. Okay, right now I'm gonna show you a hamstring exercise. This one is the single hamstrings leg curl. Single is good, it's actually great, only because many times when you're doing double hamstrings, one of them usually helps the other. But this one actually gives you the opportunity to have that weaker one get its strength back. And with this one, I would have to say it's kind of comparison to a concentration curl. You notice that concentration, you really bring the weight down and you squeeze and you kind of go down and you squeeze. Well, it's the same idea over here. And, and again, you know, this is a great exercise, you know, and uh, anybody can do it. Women want to get that shape. I'll show you diff three different positions that will hit three different areas of the hamstrings. It's not as just simple as a leg curl. I'll show you. Now, one of the mistakes you can make with this one is actually lean, lean too forward. You don't want to. You want to try and keep your back almost straight up, you know. This is a simple way. This is the one where your feet are straight. Your feet are straight. You're going to get the hamstrings. You're going to go straight up. You want to go all the way to the top. When you do it, you don't want to. This is not hamstrings. Hamstrings right here to the top and get that negative. Okay. The top, hit that negative. Top and the negative. Top again and negative. Now, here's what I'm gonna show you. To hit that hamstring glute tie-in, that little area right there, that's where it gets interesting. Let's say you finish doing 10 sets, uh, 10 reps, the last five, let's get the short movement. The short movement is gonna work this area right here. I'm gonna go up and Again, that was for the full hamstrings, the attachment right here. Now, some people have a problem with getting hamstrings down here, right at the bottom. Guess what? Foot positioning. You notice my feet were straight on this one. Well, to hit this inner area, come through the back, come through the back. Yeah. I was doing it straight, but on this one, Foot positioning, my toes are gonna be in. Notice my toes are in. By my toes being in, it will hit the inner area. So, in retrospect, feet positioning are very important. If you don't place them the right way, whether it be on the squat rack, whether it be, uh, you know, doing leg curls or anything of the sorts, uh, again, they will definitely, definitely shape up your hamstrings in more ways than one. Yes, it is one big muscle, you know, created by different strands of muscle, you know, with a couple of different names there, but in reality, hamstring as a whole, you have to really, really put your mind to it and concentrate. I'm gonna show you one more for the hamstrings. This one is great. Most people do it without even knowing it, but um, I'm gonna show you that this one's gonna be a very important one, again, because it works on stretching your hamstrings, and I'll combine that with the stiff legs. When most people get on the leg press, of course, you know, they want to work the quads. You know, you want to work the quads, 
mind you, for leg press, for your quads, your legs want to be parallel to the bar. You always got to remember that. For the quads, your legs are parallel to the bar. So let's say I'm doing leg press. I push off. It's kind of parallel. It goes parallel to the bar. Now, if I go up too high, let's say here, see the bar goes that way, my legs go that way. Am, am I doing quads? Yes, but indirectly. It's not for the full movement, but from here, I can work my hamstrings. And this is, I go this low. You don't have to go any lower. I'm already free my hamstrings and high. The weight is a little light. You need more resistance. But in reality, when you're this high, you're working your hamstrings. Whether you want to work them or not, this is what you're doing. Now, if you were doing quads again, feet lower. Feet lower down here, parallel. And now you can go a little bit lower. Big difference. <laughs> and usually, when I'm finished up with the hamstrings, of course, I like to finish off with some stiff leg deadlifts. You can do the bar, you can do dumbbells. Right now I'm gonna show you the plate. Stiff leg deadlifts, basically as you go down, your legs go back. That's how you ultimately do it. Back. Back. Most people say, I don't feel stiff leg deadlifts. Why? because they go straight down. They go down, you can stretch. You can stretch it all the way down, see? It's easy, but it's not the way to do it. Stiff-legged deadlifts is pushing your legs back as the same way as you go down. Again, great finisher, awesome. Helps the hamstrings, get that tightness. Again, gives you that football shape, American football shape, <laughs> that is. But um, it's definitely, definitely one of the exercises, especially women, they should consider finishing with. Hope you like the tips. Over here, Victor Martinez, for Sport Life, where you learn the best and where the best train.